T-minus three, two, one, zero. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Launch Sequence Podcast. We've got uh, a a not so common guest on here. You've never seen him before. The Astro <laughs> Pub, though, before. is joining us yeah. for the first show of the year. This is going to be airing on January 1st, I believe. So we're starting off the year fresh and we've got a lot of ex expectations heading into the year with Star Citizen specifically. So I thought we'd bring on the man himself right before the end of his streamathon. How long have you been streaming now? uh 32 hours so <laughs> yeah at least and at least another and either two hours and 30 minutes plus a little bit more because i've got another thing i gotta do after this so at least so, it'll be at least a good solid 36 hours so very very well prepared to have an intensive and detailed conversation thanks for thanks for taking the time no problem <laughs> all right so and and i would like to wish happy new year to everyone yes. who is uh who's coming who's watching this after the fact hopefully yes, you yes. spent your new year as well so absolutely happy new year's hope you got to spend it with loved ones or family and with some good food in the belly but i also mm -hmm. hope you've got good 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 expectations good vibes about this year for yourself not just star citizen like maybe yeah. maybe you want to take up some crocheting i hope you go and you crochet the absolute <laughs> out of whatever it is that you, <laughs> you strive for all right have a good year everybody uh, I, 2023 was a little weird yeah so let's talk about 24 and what we're expecting from Star Citizen, but more kind of what the important thing we think they need to aim for is, because there are a lot of opinions about like what's most important in the game, what should be developed at any given time, but they've obviously got their own sort of direction that they're going in. And I think they're starting to make it very clear to people what that is more and more as squadrons ending up. So let's talk about, I guess, the most important things of the year. Uh, first off, to start out, can you let everybody know like why you're here? Who I don't, I think everybody knows who you are by now. But for anybody who's there, for hello, the show. my name is Paul Berserker One Batman Shelley, your humble host and space bartender at the Astro Pub, and your professor at the Astro Historian. Um, you can come check me out if you like lore stuff at the Astro Historian. If you'd like to check out doing gameplay discussions and news analytics, uh, if you just wanna, if if you listen to the, the 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 dulcet tones of Space Tomato for any of your your news content, you can listen to that and you can jump over to my 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 content afterwards and see how we we what, what we pull out of the the same kind of content it's always fun i do that all the time so you should do that uh yeah. you can also check both of us out at um the youtube.com slash the info runners where we're both info runners and we can talk about ships and other things too so with other members of the community yes yes here at star citizen we tend to uh i don't know for lack of a better term share a lot of dips that's that's <laughs> we we <laughs> God. We 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 put our toes in the same pool. We all have our toes in the same pool, uh, frequently. Canceled. We, we like to share hot tubs. We yeah. <laughs> we, we do a New lot of folks. content together. <laughs> um, and and you'll see us featuring on each other's stuff quite a bit. It's it's good yeah. times. I think it's a great way to get multiple opinions, and the communities get to mix. And like we all talk to each other. Like a lot of the people in chat talk to each other in different communities. It's good fun, but. Uh, mm -hmm. The real, the real reason to come watch this is because Star Citizen is cool and fun. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So let's start out with this. It's been about two months, I think. Yeah, about two months yeah. since CitizenCon. Um, since we had this conversation. Yes. Live, actually. That was <laughs> yeah. good fun. You guys, go, go check that episode out if you didn't see it. Yeah. That was good. That was good. Um, so yeah, CitizenCon is two years past, or two months past, <laughs> and, and Sometimes people are wondering, something. with all the stuff they showed, is it like other years? Have they started delivering? It, does it feel like the stuff they've shown at CitizenCon is actually in the pipeline, or, or are we waiting a while again? Was it all lies, as, as like, like people like to say? Um, I personally think CIG, I, I said this before, and I, and and I, I am very specific about this term, but it feels like CIG has swagger this year. They came off the end of this year with swagger. Now, Swaggy. I, don't mean conf I don't mean confidence. I mean swagger in the sense that CIG is very much like, uh, you have no idea what's going on, do you? And, I certainly uh, hope. Yeah. I, and the thing is, is they've done that in the past. 
but there seems to be a much more aggressive swagger from CIG. And, and swagger can be good and bad. You can be overconfident or it can be rightfully confident. Uh, and when Jared walked onto the, uh, onto the, um, the ISC and immediately is like, hey, let's drop these, all these, all these things are coming in the first half of the year was like a, a very, it felt like a very big, much response to everyone being like, oh, that's all lies. It's because it was Jared being like, no, no, it's not. Those will be coming in in the, the first half of the year. So I am going to be a little bit more bold because I've been trying to be more bold in so many predictions and stuff like that. And I think CIG will, will, will 100% do everything that Jared said on that um, uh, on that last ISC, all which is most of the stuff we saw at CitizenCon. It'll be in Star Citizen before um, the end of June or early July. That I is think, bold. I, I, I think so. I think it's. I think I, 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 I'm. I'm going bold. to. I'm going to trust CIG swagger and be like, because there's just just something all it's right, different. Man. Okay, about that's eighty percent cacao chocolate bold, man. That's a uh, yeah. Because because. I mean, I keep going. So I am going to say I am in agreement with you. I will yes. join you in this bold journey. But <laughs> I also, dude, I've got trauma from the letter from the yeah. chairman last year. <laughs> like, I, I yeah. went into that letter expecting to be disappointed, and I did not expect it to fall as short as it did. And I know a lot of that is because, like, PES is just unexpectedly bad. But still. You can see from the way they presented stuff at the Citizen Con that a lot of that stuff is stuff that needed to be a lot more polished and, and wasn't going to be ready within a year. So I am, man, if cautiously optimistic was a being. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say this. Do I think that people should hype? No, 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 no. Because anything can happen and CIG could easily throw everything off, off kilter because of something. But there's a lot of stuff. Uh, I mean, if you look at the monthly reports and if you look at the progress trackers, CIG has been going absolutely hard on a couple of factors. And most of the things that they've been going super hard on are all things they showed off at CitizenCon. Uh, the new overlay systems or the new, the new well, overlay system, but also the new, the new HUD, the new map, the new uh, markers, the, the, the cargo decks, the, um, you know, the cargo, the, the, the new hangar system. All of that stuff, uh, even like the the uh, the new UGFs, the the distribution centers, which are terrible names, um, th th all of really those things, yeah, all, all of those those things, I think are the CIG has been working on it. And in the yeah. past, when we saw something come out from CitizenCon, it's been like, yeah, this is stuff we started experimenting with, or you know, this is a cool thing we did. Like, uh, I think. Last two years ago, when we had it was the Pyro Citizen Con, um, it was it, it felt very much like they threw that. It was a 2020 and 2021 where they had the 400 I can't remember which, which year that was. Oh, that was 21, I believe. That's 21. So, yes, two years ago, uh, two, two not not in 2023, not in 2022, but 2021. They that felt very experimental, and then, yeah, 2020. Two felt very lackluster to say the proper better term. It was a lot of stuff that they, they had laying around. And then the end was like 20 minutes of Squadron 42 stuff, which we're now just now starting to see. Yeah. Put in there. So. Yeah. So as, know, as I will say, I'm optimistic, but I also understand that they may and probably will miss some of those objects. I just am in a weird position where I can sit here and go, I don't know what they'll miss. Cause like, there's nothing that's that's obviously like oh they they haven't talked about this they haven't worked on this they haven't shown this off it's like maybe the EVA system is the only thing I can think of so, but it's like you know <sighs> it 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 reminds me of the great drought before 3.0 not in the sense that it's like directly the same but I remember mm -hmm. at that time we were eating so well when it came to content on like around the verse and stuff because they had so much to say about what they were working on. But people started to complain because over the course of maybe eight, nine months, a year, it started to feel like we were watching a whole lot of stuff, but we weren't actually playing it. People were like, yeah, this is mm -hmm. cool. Freaking, you remember when around the verse was like 40 minutes long <laughs> every yeah. week yeah. and people, and we complained like hell when that, that changed it. 
first it dropped down to around 20 minutes or so and then they started to be like 12 to 15 minutes every week and we didn't like that but because that happened we also started to see the actual stuff they used to talk about coming into the game i feel like we're we're kind of at that point with not everything because we've been getting a lot of stuff but tons of this stuff that's been like on monthly reports like the eva system and and in quantum travel in the star map we've been reading about these on monthly reports since around 2021 and they finally have finished bragging about the development of it and it and and it might actually end up in the game now yeah the the thing that was different from this last past and this is this is something i think we talked about it was everything they showed off was in game Mm -hmm. it wasn't in engine it was in a game with in-game assets and in-game, like they mocked up a test level and just they threw it or they, they put it together in a, um, they threw some stuff together in a, in, in a, in a server and they threw it up there as a te- like a test server. Yeah. This wasn't like a, they built everything by hand and crafted. They just, it was a lot more of uh, even like the, 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 the engine, the um, star engine demo, you could still see the pops, the pop-ins and some of the other problems that was obviously like, yeah, they were running this in game because that's what they were doing. It was like a te- yeah. an engine test game. So exactly. Like, so. Yeah, it, it felt... Yeah. And again, I, it's, it's funny because I feel like I'm repeating myself at this point, but it also felt when <laughs> we saw that, that an actual game. It, not only was it running yeah. in-game, it was also like, hey, this could have been released by other companies. You know, not, no offense to CIG. They're filled with people who know what they're doing and they've built great things before, but the, they haven't put in that extra effort into making that stuff look like real finished and... You know, what we're looking at for this first half of this next year, it finally feels like that. So do you think yeah. um, with this, I guess 322 was really the first time for them to show whether or not they could follow through with that stuff. How do you feel on what they delivered and what they didn't in that patch uh, that was mentioned at CitizenCon? 322? Yeah. Um, I think they were optimistic for 3.22 and they didn't get a lot of the stuff in there. but the stuff they did get in showed that a lot of the stuff they were talking about was real. The hair, the new hair system, which was just basically imported. Um, I think they didn't do the new cloud system, which was supposed to be in there, but they did yeah. do some aspects. There's, uh, there's definitely some changes to gunplay and gun sounds. And so there's definitely some, some small changes that they did that they were talking about, but the full recoil system isn't in there yet and all that sort of stuff. So the like there's there's a there's a few changes that were obviously like that they even said like hey we're putting we're, we're planning on putting this in that they were able to get like 80 percent of it in yeah um so the... i it, i i feel like they under delivered for it but i also feel like they were also too ambiguous because they're like this is coming out and in the next patch and then they'll say this will be coming out in the future and a lot of people thought that that meant that everything they said after the next patch was coming in the next patch even though yeah it wasn't yeah so yeah, I mean, you know, it's not a CIG presentation without at least a little bit of confusing communication. <laughs> um, unless unless they, they start crossing wires, as always. So Right. So, yeah, they did get some of those things in. I, I think, to be honest, I do like the hairstyles. Those are cool. The derelict settlements are a nice touch. But for me, the best part of what they got in 322 from CitizenCon was the, uh, the time to kill updates. I don't know if you've been doing FPS gameplay in these. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's so much it's better. It's so much better. Like, yeah. you get injuries, and you need a medic, yeah. and you don't die all the time. I mean, I, you know, that might be a skill issue, but I feel like <laughs> I'm not dying as much. I, I feel like when I would be normally dying, I'm getting a Tier 3 injury or a Tier 2 injury rather than, yeah. you know. And then if I, if I normally die, I get a Tier 3 injury, and then I could survive, and then I, when I normally die, that Tier 3 injury turns into a Tier 2 injury. It yes. feels much more like a more forgiving but also more punishing because it's, it's not just like it, it would be easier if you just died now you survive and it's like cool mm-hmm. now i have to take take my butt back to a hospital <laughs> get yeah. myself repaired and it's exhilarating so, man i was yeah we were doing the consignment mission the other day and it was me and me and drazen we were um we were fighting off waves it was just like basically mm-hmm. non-stop but he get, went down and got glitched and like, I could not get him up. I was trying to get him out by tractor beaming him all the way out and taking him to a hospital or something. But it was so hard because I had to like manage my inventory, keep getting ammo for guns, take out all these people, move his body. And there was a lot of things at once. <laughs> and, and I kept taking hits here and there. And when I normally would have expected to just go down and that whole thing is over, instead it was like ramping up in intensity. I took a 
hit in my leg and suddenly like I'm I'm bleeding out so I heal myself and then I took a, a hit in my shoulder and like my leg injury got worse so now I'm limping and I'm like hitting myself with med pens I'm grabbing my gun and shooting people trying to get out and help this guy and I'm like this feels like a game and, and yeah. the systems are starting to work together and I'm I didn't expect them to start to make such crucial decisions or changes like that so quickly after citizen con yeah that, i think that's the other thing that's important to note is that just how quickly that cig has adapted like i don't think anybody was expecting them to just be like here's pyro you know after citizen con I, we, we all we all kind of sort of talked a little bit about it people some people were talking about like hey they're gonna drop pyro but like we didn't expect them to drop it in this in a way that was just like you can test it for two weeks for like a week here you go like you can have pyro as a treat and it and and i was expecting it to be an absolute cluster and it wasn't like yeah it was surprisingly well put together like it, it was it was like playing star citizen live in 3.21 like that's what it was or 3.21 that's all it was yeah <laughs> like and it was, was with new mechanics which is cool so yeah i was gonna say like it, it unfortunately it was that close to it and like anybody who mm -hmm. was expecting pyro to be completely different in the preview channel it won't be it'll be a little different but most of the difference isn't going to matter until it's persistent and and people care about what happens in yeah. there um but yeah it's it's cool that they were able to get that out on the preview channel it's a sneaky little way for them to get us into pyro without doing server meshing and i remember you know they said that at the beginning of the year that they would try to do something like that and people were like are they going to do loading screens and and yeah you know they figured something out uh but honestly pyro is is less interesting to me after looking at citizen con i mean all these yeah. all these things that they're introducing and talking about getting into this next year a lot of people think this is like the floodgates you know we for years now oh the floodgates the, they're they're gonna mm -hmm. open the tools um do you think uh, other people out are, are saying wow this is all happening so suddenly where did this come from is this was this unexpected to you the fact that they are now starting to in, increase speed of uh the pu development sort of i was expecting the floodgates to start like a small trickle where like suddenly yeah. we get like a little burst and then that burst kind of dies down and then they they go okay this works because they experiment they do what they can and then once they get once that that trickle's gone and then it's like cool here you go because it's that's how they they work usually is like a little, we'll do a little bit of testing and see what's going on like we'll put a couple of derelict outposts on on hurston and see how's it going and then the next patch, by the way, here's 50 new derelict outposts on every <laughs> single like terrestrial planet and moon and on, on the Stanton system. You're welcome. You know, oh, we'll do a little bit of a settlement here. We'll do we'll do a settlement here and a settlement there. OK, now here's 3.22. Here's 50 new settlements like th th that sort of thing, you know, where they, yeah. they sort of they, they, they do a little dribble test and they make sure everything works. And then the next patch, it's just like, oh, we now we know it works. OK, let's turn on the machine that cranks these out and going to go. Yeah. Um, and. I wasn't expecting them to just, just 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 skip the experimental step and just start crank cranking, which is what it seems like they're they're starting to do. Um, you know, uh, you, and I think it's a, it's a matter of a lot of teams firing on all cylinders because you've got the team that the mission features team has been cranking out more and more and more modules like mission modules with new yep. mission ideas, and then the sandbox team is taking those and just kind of go nuts with making new, new missions. You've got the ship team has a bunch of new artists and 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 uh, talented um, uh, designers who all got their first kind of toes wet and now they're just like cool I know what I'm doing and they're just kind of going crazy with it you know the the, the person who did the um, the fury doing the Sulian and uh, you know the, the person behind the storm I'm sure they're going to be doing a bunch of other stuff here in the future too so like it feels like a lot of teams are starting to finally hit their stride whereas before it was. The ship team and the planet feature, you know, planet tech team. Now it feels like a lot more other teams are starting to come in. The sandbox teams are starting to like them, them being able to just kind of throw out the 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 whole. Uh, uh, not munching anymore. What do they call uh, for, uh, structural the salvage. structural salvage? Yeah, yeah. structural salvage. Um, you know, th th they're just throwing out like, the ideas and I'm sure they'll they'll iterate it further. And th that's kind of one of those things I expect that a lot of people are sleeping on because I know a lot of people are upset with how Scratch will salvage is right now. But yeah. I can see March them coming out like, hey, here's a whole gameplay loop for it, you know, or, you know, by the middle of the year or maybe by the end of next year or by the end of this year, w whenever Maelstrom comes out, them having like 
a much more in-depth gameplay loop for it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think, I think it's just, it's more of a, just it's, we're hitting a time period where a lot of teams have figured out what to do. And it corresponds with the squadron 42 teams figuring out what to do. Yeah. You know, I think that's a Uh, good point that you're making. It's like the per the pervasive sort of memo on this is that this is all happening because at citizen con cig announced that they're moving devs over from squadron but like Mm -hmm. we all know that they don't actually do those big moves until january so it's not like they they announced that in october and then suddenly the company changed and progress happened this is also a long-term thing that we've been seeing with, like you said, the missions team came on to like three different ISCs to explain stuff. The arena commander team has been building up over the last year or two. Like the Montreal team came in two years ago and they're doing hospitals and derelicts and stuff. So it's like a lot of long-term teams all sort of meeting a, a level of efficiency in the same time is, is what you're seeing. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's just a, uh, as uh, as I'm going to get uh, absolutely scared for this, and please scare me in the comments below. Just make sure you spell my name right and make sure you type it in the comments. Um, <laughs> spell it right but, for Google. Um, yes. Uh, I will say this is what uh, staggered development looks like. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, I said it. I said it. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here. Because so many people made fun of staggered development and the, the effectively all that staggered development is, is that instead of having one team work on like everyone work on the same thing for like two, three months, now you have different teams working at different iterations. And, you know, that's what we're seeing now is like now that the mission features team is working on stuff in their own six months. Once they're done, the team that work, uh, you know, the, the sandbox teams can take those mission features teams and then do a bunch of different missions with those those new features. So as a result, it feels like every patch we're getting more and more content because the 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 streamlining of effect of those those things being put together, the down the upstream mm-hmm. and the downstream teams are like that. Um, and so, like for instance, I think a lot of people kind of have this mentality, as you said, where it's like October they said they're done, and suddenly they switched. A lot of those teams were done in like June or July, and because not every team is is going to be working at the same pace. There may be Squadron 42 teams that were done in January that are just yeah. that then started moving over to I mean to... on the monthly reports you were you were reading that it said like, oh yeah, they've reached yeah. beta stage and now are yeah. kind of moving off. Yeah. And what what does beta look like? And so now the the team that was, I think it was like audio, the team that was focusing on audio, the whatever four or five developers they have on there, they maybe have two that are still on squadron because they're focusing on polishing and kind of going through they have rather than having to develop brand new suites of sound effects um and and that's you know the same thing with animations like the animations is the big one like animations moving into post alpha um (laughs) yeah not beta post Post alpha alpha. (laughs) yeah um but you know that's that sort of thing and and that was like july uh so it's, it's important to keep in mind that because not only are the teams on squadron on star citizen staggered but so are the squad 42 teams so things will finish at different rates. Those, those um, features are also coming together to make a lot more content than just what, like the, some of their parts. Like the cargo yeah. refactor getting added to the game made bounty hunting so much better. And I never, I never, I mean, you just were doing this, right? In your stream. Yeah. I never yeah, thought I just about that. Stum- stumbled upon four major cash cows of ships, a, a Caterpillar, an M2, or no, an A2, a, 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 a Reclaimer, and a um, a Starfarer. And we just happened upon them, and I got a bunch of people together, took them all down, and made, I think, 10 million UEC <laughs> off of, off of those, those, those things. It now suddenly make, makes bounty hunting viable money strategy if you accidentally into some of those people, or if you yeah. work together. So now you you have an incentive to work together and have people who are more traders or have like those big cargo ships with you while you're bounty hunting because you can make more money. And it's diversifying the gameplay loops and weaving them in together for more of an experience. Yeah. So, and that's, that's where we're probably going to start to feel a real strong feeling of progress in 24, because like a lot of these systems are coming online at the same time. And 
Mm -hmm. you know, I guess it comes down to whether the missions team can get that featured in or factored into like very standardized gameplay. But I think a lot of people are going to notice a very different uh, amount of gameplay. Like they started adding the gameplay in 23 and that was great. But these systems are actually going to start to work together next year. I mean, the the freaking freight elevators, dude. How long have we been waiting for that? Three years. (laughs) Three years. We didn't even know what they were talking about when they were first talking about that thing. Uh, and, and we actually brought this up earlier. You were, as you were talking about, you, you're stabbing yourself with a med pen, dragging your friend and trying to get him back up, taking shots back and forth. Now a medic is a viable profession, you know? Uh, having someone like a salvage uh, crew with you while you're doing bounty hunting missions makes sense because they can start scraping up the holes and getting a little bit extra cash or... Um, uh, yeah, so, like, we've already started to see them integrated with one another. It's just going to get bigger than that. You know, yeah. it's going to get more, more people be involved. So, which is exciting. So, agreed. As somebody who is, like we've talked about, reading monthly reports, looking ahead, what they're developing, what their plans are, sort of maybe figuring out their long term goals, what do you feel like 2024 is themed as? Oh, that's a hard one. Because I, th- I think there's two themes for 2024, and I, I I'm gonna caveat where I think the one theme is optimistic and the other one is probably more realistic. Um, the optimistic one is the year of Squadron 42. Almost certainly, based off of everything I've kind of gathered from month reports stuff and talking with people at CIG, it seems like their internal date is like November of this, of this coming year, of 2024. This is coming out on, on Monday, so November of this year. Okay. Now, do I, act, I, do I actually think they're going to come out with like October, November of, of this year? No. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think they're going to release that. I think they're going to hit like June, and they're going to look at it. They're, they're going to do a big meeting about a go-no-go, about like doing gold passes and talking with their distributors and all that kind of stuff, because there's going to have to be some sort of physical copies for those who have physical copies and all those sorts of things. And they'll sit down and they'll have that discussion and the teams will be like, we could use six more months, you know, or a year to polish. Cause it's good. Polish is a huge step. And, and we've all seen the problems with polish. Like Starfield was an example. Um, Name a game from Cyberpunk. the last five years. Yeah. They, they, they all were pushed too early compared to what they needed for polish. It's, uh, Cyberpunk released Phantom Liberty in 2023. It's probably saved the game and was 100% the you know result of a bunch of different fixes. It feels almost like Phantom Liberty should have been when they released the game, which yeah, is and it's, you know, the, it's the three only years DLC, after it was released. Right, the only yeah. major DLC they're getting. Yeah, there's no more DLC after that. Kind of moving on to 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 Witcher three, so or Witcher four, so. Um. So yeah, like that, that's a good example. So we 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 as fans should probably encourage cig to polish rather than push take it um with squadron take a time make sure it works and all sorts of things so um but i also think that the other theme is um that is pyro the road to put 4.0 or the the end of 3.0 the beginning of 4.0 not the road but like the dawn of 4.0 if that <laughs> that sounds epic enough yeah the, we can't use the, roads anymore man <laughs> We're done with that. The birth of 4.0. We've moved the rise of 4.0. Yeah. The, the 4.0 epiphany. Yeah, I think yeah. um I think I think you're 4.0 feels like like almost like Star Citizen 2.0. Like that's really yes. what they want. They want to redefine what the Star Citizen experience is. And it seems like next year is the year they do that. Yeah. And and I also think it's gonna be a kind of a for most people, it's not going to feel as epic. Because for those, those of us who follow the game, like if you're watching this right now, you probably follow this game pretty closely. And if you do, you probably will feel it. It'll feel like a slow, gradual pace where a lot of the stuff that'll be in Pyro will be in Stanton well before Pyro is released. And when Pyro releases Stanton, it, it'll, it'll be just like what we have in Stanton at the time, but in Pyro. So it'll be like, oh, cool, new areas. And people will be excited because of new areas and stuff like that. And, you know, you'll... You'll get the the great clickbaity titles: Star Citizen releases Alpha 4.0, no release in sight, or 13 years after, uh, you know, after uh, initial, you know, launch or whatever. <laughs> but uh, 
like a lot of the stuff is that cross that crossroads faction gameplay uh you know mission new mission features be so bold to say like cargo missions the vaunted cargo missions that we've been waiting for for forever will probably be in in oh, place man. yeah the cargo well, elliot elliot was was bragging about it for like uh, a couple of months after that ended up in the monthly report so like we know he's working on it so keep working uh. elliot yeah, I was also <laughs> yeah. bragging about it internally after I read about it in the monthly reports. The idea of cargo missions yeah. sounds great, man. I mean, we've been running courier missions for such a long time now. And one of the biggest, I think, pet peeves people have, industrial players at least have, is that you can't do actual cargo missions. You can only trade. Like, you, you either have to pick up three boxes that you're not paying for, or you have to go and put all your money into the cargo and make that loss. And we really, really need some actual cargo based missions but i i i think um it really feels like especially with the things you were saying with like missions and how teams are coming together and introducing these locations with missions that they're trying to make this a it they're they're really changing this into a marketable game not just mm -hmm. not just an alpha or like something that we're testing they're really from what i'm seeing trying to get to a point where this can basically be like Fortnite in 2018. Like it was, it was, it was released technically, like people were playing it, mm -hmm. but it was very heavily under development. They were still calling it a beta. Like they really want this yeah. to be something that they can continuously develop, but people recognize as an actual game. And I think these like quality of life kind of polished things they're doing are super important to that. But do you think that that might drive them to continue making the game more casual as they try and build this, their player base. Yeah, I've, I've heard this concern before. And I, I think yeah. a lot of, um, I think we're going to see two, two folds with 2024. We're going to see the game get more casual and we're going to see the game get more difficult. A uh, good example of this is engineering. Like everyone complains that, you know, we're getting more casual, but then engineering is going to require you to do routine maintenance on all of your equipment. Double check your equipment before you go out. Repair after, because just using the equipment's going to break it down. Um, you know, you're going to have checklists for engineers who are going to figure out what you need to do. It's not going to be like 17 pages long. It'll be like seven things you need to do at most. But generally speaking, doing that, you'll have people who have to learn how to use cargo grids properly and learn like where you're going to stack in terms of like what's coming in and what's coming out. You're going to have um, actual like f uh, it, like atmosphere that you're going to have to manage uh, with the EVA system. You're going to lose your your infinite uh, EVA fuel. You're going to have to use your tractor beam, your hand tractor beam, which is going to have a battery, so it's going to go down in, in power to be able to move around in short bursts. And you're going to have to use your kind of like hand walking thing that they have, your magnetic hands, as it were, to get around a lot of places. But you won't you 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 get jumped off or you get or you get um jostled off your ship as you're trying to go EVA you're in deep space if you don't have the proper equipment you're just not going to be able to EVA so like EVAing is going to be the thing you have to prepare for people can be be, uh, be you know uh, skilled at doing or prepared to do in, in for it's something as simple as like a similar as similar as like medics or engineers it'll be its own sort of subclass of people who are doing these sorts of things and that a lot of all of that is stuff that's going to happen in 2024. Like none of that I just mentioned is some far off idea. It's stuff they've already talked about, stuff they've already shown and stuff they have specifically said in many cases are going to come out in the first half of the year. So we're not looking at a more complicated. We're not looking at a simpler game. We're looking mm -hmm. at a more complicated game that's going to have an easier barrier, lower barrier to entry. That's the I think that's the key is making it easier for you to get into it but it's still going to be complex to be uh, to add that complexity for individual gameplay. So it, it certainly feels like they're trying to thread the needle in both directions. Like you look at FPS and they're adding things like ammo management in ways that are like, yeah, you have to pay attention to your ammo, but also we're going to make it a little bit easier for you. And then they're also mm -hmm. adding things like sliding, which is like, hey, we're going to rip this out of Call of Duty. And so you see reactions from people thinking it's both getting too simple and too complex because of some of the things that we're seeing added in next year. And I, I got to agree with you, man. I mean, yeah, we might, we might be able to like 
do some easy looting or something that's very gas i don't know when you look at engineering like you're talking about or the maintenance of your ship and and things like that or um beam go burr life and, and, support, yeah. yeah like yeah there's a lot more to it than just the actual gameplay elements that you're playing the button you're pressing it's the combination of those things and i think that hopefully next year that's something that becomes more clear too yeah and we also got to remember that things are going to get more complicated. Like, we look at the uh, whole whole uh, structural salvage that we have right now. Um, right. That's, not, that's not the last version of structural salvage. Right now, it's super instantaneous. You can just Thanos snap it into different debris and send it over there. You know they're going to do some sort of, because it's vibrations, they'll do some sort of resonance frequency where you have to keep it at a certain resonance for a certain amount of time. And it's going to bounce back and forth, and you're going to have to like, keep that needle inside the uh, inside the bars to make sure it works. And yikes, that's stuff like mining. It'll, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be like mining, like uh, like a lot of stuff like that, and uh, or or knowing like having the right frequency so you can take like a charge out and play, plap it on there, and like set it to the right frequency because you scanned it. You know, okay, well, I need to hit this at fourteen four point four. You know you know, uh, whatever vibration, uh, units they have, you know, yeah. to, to I mean, vibrate yeah. it to pieces. So we all knew that something was going to be simplified. I think I'm always asking, yeah. and I, I say this about other things in this game too, like the quantum simulation. I ask myself, how will this happen? How are they going to do this? Maybe they have to change this stuff. And sometimes mm -hmm. that, that does end up happening. And that's unfortunate with, with salvage. Um, but as they continue to, sorry, just kind of shifting gears, um, this is related to this discussion about casualization and where that comes from really mm -hmm. is this game is continuing to grow. It's grown for a while. Um, and people are seeing like the huge development numbers. So they've talked about wanting to have like 1700 people by the end, I think of this year or next year or 20, mm -hmm. I think 25 at the end of 25, um, in, in one office, it's important to know. Really? That's Was that in Manchester? They wanted that's just in Manchester because Manchester can hold up to 2000 people. So that's in, so that, right. They are already at 1200. Mm -hmm. Um, they've got a lot of, of <laughs> ways to go with this game. They've built these new studios and bought these new buildings. Like they're, they're spending a lot of money. Um, mm -hmm. do you think that they have a sound plan for maintaining this and not needing to downsize in a, in a few years? And could that possibly start to, move towards the direction of hey we need to expand our player base we need to casualize a little bit more do you have any um, worries I, about that no because cig always has the single player card they can play and that's why squad War 2 is actually important is mm -hmm. you can make a casual star citizen game just make it single player you know uh that that's 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 really the 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 track and that's how cig has talked about for spent like funding star citizen for a long time is releasing single player games and uh you know uh, to the market for you know uh, as iterations of squadron or other ideas and using that the money from that to go back into the development studio because all they have to do is fund the studio rather than fund uh the um shareholders and the shareholders who are currently you know part of the board are mostly focused on you know, marketing and, you know, new techniques and other kind of stuff that, like that. And a lot of them are, if I remember correctly, most of the board members are just personal friends of Chris Roberts. So, yeah. um, so it's, it's that sort of like, I think the chairman is still, he's either chairman is either Roberts or Sandy, like one of the, either Chris or Sandy are the, is the chairman of the board. Like, so there's, I think it's still Chris, but Sandy's still important in part of that. So, uh, but yeah, that's, that's effect effectively it. Um, like I, I think that CIG does won't have to worry about casualization of Star Citizen because to get more funds because they can sell uh, single player games when they get Squadron Forty Two out because yeah. that's the key. That's the that's the albatross. That's it's always been the albatross, and that's the big thing because um, to to give people context. Squadron 42 doesn't have to be a billion dollar property to make CIG money. They can easily make a hundred million dollars uh, on Squadron 42's release. That, that would be a, a, like a moderate release for a hundred million dollars because they're selling game packages at a much higher price than they would for your typical kind of entry level. There's going to be more marketing behind it. And, you know, 
what is it? Uh, let's just say $60. I don't think most people think it's going to be $70, but let's just say it's $60 yeah. a, a pop. Um, you know, you sell 10,000 units at $60 a pop. That's uh, not going to, I, in my math, I, I, I said, I opened my mouth and started talking about <laughs> math without a calculator nearby. Me. Um, Put me to sleep with these numbers, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's you know six of a thousand. Um, I'm, I'm, my brain no work. Um, uh, I have an excuse. I've been streaming for thirty three hours. Yeah, uh, you, you can say that. <laughs> I probably should have been able to call that one out. Uh, six hundred thousand. That's six hundred thousand dollars. Now, obviously, that's not all profit, but because they're not selling it on Steam and it's all internal, there's going to be a little bit more of uh, there's going to make more money over time. I think Chris Roberts even had a kind of a, a presentation where he talked about why he's doing it solo rather than going through Steam because it's something like he earns. After all of the, the 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 funds and all the stuff that's taken out for uh, for the different services, he ends up making like eighty to ninety percent of the money goes straight to CIG rather than for fees and other things for 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 crowdfunding. Sure. So, and that's not, that's ten thousand units. That's that would be a very low release for for Star Citizen Squadron Forty Two, and that's still, um, you know, uh, six hundred thousand. Yeah, uh, dollars. yeah. I mean, Squadron Forty Two can come out and and not be the best game ever. I think no reputation wise, that's going to hurt it because it's taken so long yeah. and like so much is built up behind it. That will happen no matter what. I don't think this game can release and and not fall short of the expectations that have been set from being in the public eye for so long. But I do agree with you. I think it it can help with funding. But man, there's a lot of questions around the funding of the game going forward. Even even. Yeah. You know, right now we're getting to a new stage with this game in 24, and we can see that they've started to shift their ship releases less from these concept releases and more to just releasing ships straight to the game or doing the ones that are that were earlier built. And there's a lot of questions still swirling about how are they going to do ship sales after Star Citizen has reached, reached maturity? Um, what will they do to make money? Will there be subscriptions or cosmetic sales or like all this stuff? And I think that's probably one of the things they also want to start to leave more hints about next year base building oh yeah seems like a good opportunity to make money for sure i think they could definitely make some money i'm a little concerned about base building because one of the things that's pretty obvious that they could do is monetize the uh, because they already have um the land claims and then that that's that can creates a big problem be like oh you want you want a land claim a hundred dollars like, right yeah so no that would be 45 dollars and a hundred dollars on top of that plus like whatever the pioneer well, costs or any of the they wouldn't will cost, they wouldn't make so. it so you can't get them in game that would be pretty for the first the... that's how that's how cig works though for the first six months after release generally speaking for like ships you can't buy a ship in, in game until after the first six months yeah and i think it's a stupid rule it's a very stupid rule because you have it locks out in some cases professions entirely yep. Yep, so. the vulture was gone for a long time, and I, mm, I do it's agree still that not would rentable. be that yeah. would be bad. Um, I hope they don't do that with land claims. I don't think that's necessary, but yeah. you know that it's always a possibility. I guess I don't. Yeah, think I that's think necessary. that's doesn't make sense from my perspective. But that, that's my my worry. But I think they could easily you know make more money on like I still think. They could definitely make money off of customization. Oh yeah! If they kind of sat down on that and, and allowed people to buy color palettes and uh, or or put on like icons on their ship, you know, they could buy icon packs or something like that, um, and then use the 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 current skins as sort of patterns that you can then just change the colors on. There's a lot of things they could go for that would would improve. Like they could make they would make a killing off of that alone because so many people would want to have their own unique look at whatever ship they have so. yeah or or space station or building or like or building yeah, yeah there's a lot or, of or clothing you know or suit you know armor of rooms so. yeah our armor vehicles yeah. there's a lot of stuff that could be customized in this game they just got to get the artists for it what do you think mm -hmm. about base building overall this is something that i don't think anybody was really expecting to see next year i don't think we'll see it in game next year at least not in any major way but they're claiming it's starting development what's your take um, I think it's going to be at certain development. I think, that, you know, going off what they said. Yeah, I, I, I believe it. It just seems like a weird thing. I, I, I believe that what they're shooting for, and this is what they're shooting for, not what they'll do. 
um, is they'll have some version of base building into the game by the end of next year or by the end of this year, I should say 2024, since this is going live on the first. Uh, <laughs> I keep making that mistake. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we're in between years. Uh, for those of you who are watching after the fact, we recorded this in 2023, but it's going live in 2024. It's the annual so Twilight I think, Zone. I, yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, I think they will have some form of base building at the end of 2020. And it'll be that little push cart trolley and maybe the, the, the MCV that they've, they've, that's been leaked in the files in the past. Those sorts of things are probably what they're going to release and have us use as a, as an initial base building, um, like tools for that. So, uh, but yeah, I gotta, I gotta wonder given where the game is right now, if by this time next year, we would be in a place where you could really take advantage of that. Like if I, if you were to try and put base building into the game right now, you probably wouldn't mm -hmm. expect to have a base you know, a couple of days later, like, do, is it going to fall through the map? Is it, is the yeah. server going to crash and I'm just going to lose that data? I mean, we've got PES now, which is good, but the excitement around base building for me also depends so much on server meshing. And it's like, if, if server meshing isn't really coming together so that the game isn't more stable and able to handle these things, how much fun will we get from base building? Yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's a legitimate question. I ha can't tell you about What's going on? I, I fear that what CIG is going to do is they've been very aggressive about their dates because it takes them, doesn't take them too long to actually build out some of this tech. You know that PES itself took about six months for them to make, but it took them three months just to test it with players to make sure it works. So, and it was still a disaster. <laughs> it basically took them a year to actually produce it. Um, so, and we, we, we've seen that, like, the uh, separ separation of replication layer, uh, you, you know what I'm talking about, like, the separation of like, replication layer, they wanted to get that in, in 3.21, didn't make it, so they now are moving it to 3.22, because it obviously took them longer than they thought. They actually, the actual making the tech didn't seem like it'd take them that long, but then the testing is going to exposing weird things going on. Like desync is much worse now. And yeah. those are the problems they have to, to kind of deal with, with that system, which I'm glad that they do the preview channel because otherwise we'd have that in 3.22 right now. And it would be a disaster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was rough. So, so, you know, hopefully they can work that out, but it always seems like they, they're kind of about three to six months off of their, their dates when it comes to those major foundational tech. So when I hear Jared say something like they're planning on internally hitting uh, uh, Pyro by summer, I'm like, end of next year. And as a result, it's going to also be just kind of a, a mess when it comes out, as always new, new tech and foundational tech is. So that is always my, my, my fear, um, that like this new foundational tech is going to break everything, so it's going to be not enjoyable. Yeah. That, I think that's just the PTSD from 318 speaking. We've been um, trained. But, <laughs> but on the on the flip side because you know it may take them until november of next year to get to get 4.0 out we're going to get some really stable patches between 3.22 um, and 3.20 whatever uh I guess yeah. five <laughs> so it'll be some really good fun patches so a 317 streak you know so very stable and these features are crunchy man everything yeah. that we haven't seen yet is exciting from like freight elevators to UI, MFDs, star maps, raids, distribution centers, like all this stuff is anything that we really see added is going to be pretty interesting, I think, from here on. Plus the stuff they've been quietly working on in the background, like investigation missions, which they've, they've been <laughs> trucking along on, but they haven't done anything they with did, yet. They did a design brief on that over a year ago, and we haven't seen anything yeah. on it. I wonder how far they've come. They they mention it in the monthly reports quite frequently. Um, it's and it's it is in depth. Like they have they set up like the scene and they have like this the, like it's like an escape room almost. You like you like the way they described it is like the placement of props inside and the location for the investigation is key to understanding and solving some of those investigations. So. That's nuts from what, what I've been hearing about it that is, from this monthly report group stuff. So that is pretty cool. Let's talk and, about the missions uh, and stuff, actually, because there's there they sure. have a lot of stuff planned there. Um, 
I actually would like to go to distribution centers because that's mm -hmm. they they introduced those to us and they kind of I guess they rebranded the UGFs and sort of added some extra ideas on top of these locations. But then Jared came out this last month and he was like, these are going to be places where every single type of gameplay will be possible. And they're, mm -hmm. they're sort of introducing these almost as like the go-to place for gameplay in Star Citizen now. Do you think this is going to be like above cities and outposts and, and caves as locations they've made and being a, a places they want us to go more? Yes. Let me start off by saying, by the way, CIG distribution centers, terrible name. You've, 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 yeah, I would like to congratulate you on continuing to have terrible names for everything you do. Hire somebody who can sit down or, or, or just get your writers to write you cool names and give them less restraint. <laughs> um, it's because, because you mentioned distribution centers and like everyone goes cargo, you know, because that's the, that's right, the thing that's, they're going to think about is cargo. Yeah. But like, no, 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 it's also going to be where raids are happening and investigation missions are happening. And, you know, possibly even things like in the future, like salvage missions and uh, medical missions. Like, it's just a weird kind of term. I get what they're going for. It's more like warehouse or facility would be what I'd use for it. But and uh, yeah, I, I do. I do 100 percent think that it is a, uh, a situation where they're going to want us to use this because they're going to be able to put more tools there and more in it's, if you think about it, I'd like, I could compare it to the Orson platforms. That's what I'd, I'd compare it to. If you look at the Orson platforms, they have so many different varieties of Orson platforms. They can pretty much do anything they want in Orson. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is what they would inspired them to go, let's do something like that, but on the ground. You know, but with underground facilities. So um, then, how do you think? You, yeah, how do you think this compares to our our UGFs? Like, is are you? They're basically these are going to be. I mean, I get what you're saying. The Orison yeah. facilities were made in Crusader because they don't have ground locations for UGFs. So, and these are the yeah. new UGFs we're seeing, maybe larger than the small ones in Stanton, but taking that same that same responsibility. Yeah, and and I, I think what we're going to see is yes, yeah, CIG wants us to do those use those things. Uh, I'd also like to caveat that I don't think we're going to see UGFs, many UGFs, until probably the second half of the year. I think they'll, they'll, they'll do a one where they're like, we're bringing UGFs, and there are three, and they're all on Microtech. Yeah. Um, and then they'll test them. Like I said, they'll test it for like a couple of weeks. That'll get done. And then once it gets done, it will, um, they'll, they'll like roll it over into, um, uh, Gosh, what is it? Uh, roll it over into like like the, the, then then the the Napu team, formerly Montreal, Austin, <laughs> right, and, to get things and, to and work LA, there. the Na Napu team will just sit there and be like, oh, by the way, now every single planet has four. <laughs> every single bo planetary body has four. So every planet has uh, like you know, Hurston has four, uh, uh, Microtech has four, and all of the moons now have four <laughs> on the, each one of them. Um, and then there's and then there's the uh, the odd one out. R Corp, but we know what yeah. they're doing there, right? So yeah, it's the that's... internal. It's the the, the and that's that's another thing. I yeah. could we, they've talked about that a lot. Montreal has been very hard at work, and that's the next one after the UGFs or the uh, distribution centers is that they're working on is the the new that new overhaul building so, interiors, building interiors, which yeah. is nuts. <laughs> For that, I I feel like if I were to take any like a Venn diagram of technology that's being worked on by Star Citizen and or by CIG and Rockstar on GTA 6 I feel like that would be it like building mm -hmm. out interiors of buildings and cities seems like one of the next obvious ways we could go forward in, in these big games and I know they do it to an extent in some mm -hmm. cities but I feel like this is actually going to be something we see a lot more in the industry and I'm really excited to see what happens with with our corp because like We've talked kind of about the whole pizza delivery missions and stuff. And I'm thinking, man, if you mm -hmm. can start making deliveries to specific apartments and offices and stuff like that, how much does that open up their ability to make beginner missions? It's, it's a great idea. Like just in general, you know, take your little Aurora, drop off a pizza in the middle of uh, middle of uh, area two, you know, drop off, a, you go drop onto a, the top of a roof. You have to go, okay, they're on floor seven, room 73. And, you know, Go down and the elevator and deliver it, that kind of stuff. That's that. 
that gives you a lot more flair because it also makes you feel like the world is alive too. And that's, uh, that also adds a bunch of other things. I'm a smuggler by trade. It's what I like to do in game. Um, it's my kind of gameplay loop that I want to do. And the internal, all of this is going to allow for things like tunnels that can lead in between the various different uh, locations. So you can like sneak your way into Hurston and maybe, you know, I don't know, help a bunch of refugees escape or people who escape the, the, the clutches of Hurston. So now you have more interesting missions other than just getting gasping weevil eggs or, 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 you know, widow to from place to place. Now you can like move people and it's more like morally gray because it's, le- it's moral that they want to escape and they're being held there, but it's illegal, that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Um, and, and it just allows for so many more as we, kind of back on topic, it allows for a lot more dynamic, interesting gameplay that CIG can play with and, and opens up the space more because in theory, everything can be a space. And because it's all compartmentalized with the PES or with um, object container streaming, you know, it shouldn't impact gameplay that much because it's like, well, now you only see this room. You only see this hallway. So the rest of the game doesn't matter. I hope so. so. I hope it, I hope it works out. There's always some concessions that need to be made, but um, yeah. their their people do some really impressive work, especially out at Montreal, from what we've seen. Mm-hmm. Let's yeah. see. Um, I want to ask about uh, the 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 year, how this year has gone, and let's hold on. Let's go back to building interiors for a second, because I, we're not saying that's going to come out this year, right? No, no, no. That's a hope, uh, I, but they didn't really talk about that. They haven't. It's the thing they're working on after distribution centers. And let's be let's be clear: distribution centers being in the game does it's not going to be the end because CIG does see this as their one stop shop for all gameplay going forward. So distribution centers are definitely going to have to get a lot of love after the fact. They're going to have to get missions that are tied to them. They're going to have to get. Um, probably new features, new additions, like maybe they'll have their own cargo decks or cargo elevators so you can pick up cargo from them or uh, there'll be a ton of different things that they'll play around with is, is those ideas. So, uh, but no, I do not think that it's going to come out this year. I do think we might see it at the end of this year and might, we might see some of the first test versions of them, but you know. Yeah, I, I hope so. They were in the game files. So something's yeah. going on with them. Um, what are the best features in your opinion? And we've got a, a list to reference here just in case. What are the best features in your opinion that people can look forward to in 2024? Let me look at that that features, but I can tell you the easiest one, the one that that uh will have everyone screaming yes, which is the art and the new star map. <laughs> like that, there's no that is the big there's no context or no that contest. Is no, no contest. It is it is the only thing that was that will improve the improvements. The map is so big because it's not just a star map. It's regional maps, so you can have map in local areas. It allows for mapping areas and thus, you know, making scanning and mapping an area like for exploration missions matter. Yep. Um, it allows for marking locations so you can go back and you know to those those areas rather than just having to and sharing that with other people. It's it's so many more things than just a map. And plus it's also the UI over, overlay with things like the, the Moby Glass. So all of that stuff is the same. Um, I will say beyond that, let's look at some of these, some of these ones. That map is like the single, like probably one of the most impactful changes the game has ever seen. Oh yeah. Um, of course, you know me. The other thing I'm going to say, looking at this list, is Reputation version 2. Yes. Yes, that's, that's. I am a big, firm believer that CIG is really good at world building on paper and world dressing in terms of like building a universe that feels like it exists. But they haven't meshed the two together very well. And that's where Reputation is going to start doing that. And the other thing is, of course, they have with reputation, they're going to have to start doing mission givers and mission chains, which they seem to have been dodgy about doing until recently. And now they started talking about it more like at CitizenCon, they specifically said that each station in Pyro will have its own mission giver that you can go to if you get a good reputation with them. They talked about the idea of unlocking specific equipment and gear from different transportation companies. If, if you work with those companies and improve your skills, your, your reputation with them. 
So there's a lot of stuff that's that seems to be tied into the reputation system that is going to be that sort of what is the universe about? You know, talking with your representative at Kovalex, he might slip in something about, you know, the Senate meeting because they're going to change the corporate taxes and he's mad about that and you know, uh, you know, wants you to distribute a bunch of flyers about, you know, don't tax, you know, the hardworking people of the empire or whatever. <laughs> Suddenly that universe becomes, oh, you know, there's a Senate and they tax people and the Kovalex doesn't like that. You know, yeah. you start learning a lot of those contexts. And that's really where the universe, as they've built it, will start to seep into people's play styles and play experiences. Yeah. Like I said earlier, um, the whole like smuggling people out of out of Lorville, like that, well, that alone just noting the context that these people are people who've signed a, tw a, a lifetime contract are trying to escape this contract and the, you know, this moral uh, ambiguity, that'd be cool. That, that requires a lot of other context and a lot of stuff added to it, like being able to have NPCs follow you and <laughs> load them into a, into, a, into a ship and all those other things, but uh, which is not on this list, by the way, I'm not saying this would happen, but that, uh, you know, next year, but that those sorts of things are the sorts of things that add more gameplay. And that all requires things like reputation to exist in the first place. It's yeah. the PES of story building. So <laughs> yeah, reputation is like progression in this game. I mean, mm -hmm. we can't, it can't be ships, right? You could just buy a ship. Reputation is like the one thing that you have to go in game and play to unlock. And um, it also gives you a sense of like context and belonging. Like you're saying, you know, yeah. right now you load into the game and you don't really have like a story to pursue. And a lot of people are looking for stories, wondering where are the mission chains? Where's the long story that I need to, to, to get in here? And people will say, oh, it's a sandbox game. Don't worry about that. You don't need that. But it's not true. That's going to be in the game. No. There, there are going to be long-term narratives that you can follow. And that does a ton of helping people care about this stuff. Yeah. Uh, sandboxes are great, but sandboxes require tools. And they like, you know, you go into a sandbox, it requires you know, a bucket and, you know, a shovel or, you know, a, a rake or whatever you need to, to play in that sandbox. And part of that is gameplay. And the other part of that is context. You know, um, when you, when you're in a sandbox and, and you build, make a little sandcastle, maybe you take your little green army men and you go put them in there. Maybe you put your little dolls in there and they, they, they're, they're the prince and princesses or whatever. Like you have those, those toys and those tools to help you experience that universe or that, that sandbox. And when it comes to video games, having a universe that feels believable and lived in is important because now you, your actions have consequences and you have some context for what's going on rather than just gun go burp, yep. know, beam, beam go bzzz, you know, <laughs> so. And definitely don't actually mix your computers with sandboxes. That don't. will that's go bad poorly. Idea. Yes. What are, what are you talking um, about? They're both made out of sand. Silicon's just sand, right? That's, that's how this a works. It's sandbox, right? dude. Just play in it. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i think i think reputation would be a huge addition this year and i also am all on board with you on the mission givers it seems like they're kind of waiting for maybe um server meshing to be in a better place to try and yeah. run those but this does feel like a year when as we we saw some signs last year the narrative team is getting more involved in creating missions and locations which we've kind of started to see and the missions team has finally taken back over the reputation system so that's actually a mm -hmm. really good that's a that's a good chance we'll see proper development there this year, especially because they're also linking it into the cargo stuff they're doing. Yeah. Well, by the way, we have to also mention that uh, this is a challenge that you have to get it done. Um, Elliot, you and your team, Elliot. We're setting the stage. I know you watch these, Elliot. We're going to hand um, out pitchforks, Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want my universe, Elliot. <laughs> I want to smuggle people for reasons. No, the, yeah, for, actually... For, for good reasons. <laughs> Honestly, still going back to that reputation page they put out like a year and a half ago where they showed all the professions mm -hmm. and there was a freaking reputation panel for kidnapping and they just yeah. never explained anything. <laughs> yeah. That, just... I mean, it's, that's, that's a good context itself. Like something like that is great for Pyro because you might need somebody who's a good kidnapper for good or bad reasons, you the know? The heck does that game you, look like? Like, what do I need to specialize in? It's, <laughs> it's, about, it's, about, it's bounty hunting with, t with yeah, kinks. Yeah, it's basically. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so bounty it's, hunting with a little more leper, leather. Yeah, b bounty hunting with less, with less rules is what that is. Um, so. 
Well, yeah. So uh, I think um, the reputation is a good one. The star map is the star map will never be lost on anybody. I think no. anybody who tells me that star map's not a problem, I'm like, do you play? Okay. I sometimes <laughs> people are like, game. I don't know what you're talking about. The star map looks great, and I'm like sitting there on stream trying to click at the planet, and it's not appearing. <laughs> then Hershey's tell me how to disappeared. Fix this. Hurston's just disappeared. Try, try clicking yeah. on Hurston. You bring, bring up the map. Hurston's gone. You have to like yeah. scroll into where you think Hurston is and it'll pop up. I swear it's getting worse every every patch, like somehow. That, <laughs> like, is, that, is, that is driving nut. Driving yeah. multiple nut. Um, I've, got a, I've got a wild card for you. Do you okay. think that we will see the skill system actually be implemented in any way next year Ooh. or in 24? You know, I think we might. I think that might be the one. Because it's, it's such a small, small, it's such a minor addition in the, sen in the broad scheme of things that I could see it being added. Because I, I, uh, I don't know if you've noticed this and, or, or anybody in, in, in the, like, kind of viewing this, if you're viewers, if you've noticed this. But CIG, like, two years ago, would go out and be like, we made a coffee vendor. And it wasn't even like we made a coffee vendor. It's like the one dude who's just started made a coffee vendor and they blew up a big thing about did the did bar they do an entire tender. ISC. <laughs> no, the bartender was entire... multiple ISCs, man. Yeah. Monthly reports. So, like, yeah. Sneak peeks, like, like spectrum posts. And so like when they release it and it becomes a big feature of the patch, it's mentioned all over the place. And it's like like but they're at the point now that they're adding things and they're just like, oh yeah, but we forgot to mention it. It's not, it's not like the front line of their advertising, you know, even for 3.22, which was pretty, which was pretty light, like, like hair got more attention, which it should be because hair is very hard to do in video games. Like 3D hair is notoriously hard to complete you know, and to do. And CIG seems to have like kind of done a pretty good job. Um, but we're now at a point where like the dusters was, were, were added in, uh, in 3.22, right? And, and all of those locations. Yep. He didn't say anything. There's no, no mention of a new new gang. It's just location. It's just, just casually dropping brand new gangs into the universe. And yep. and that's I think that's one of those features, the whole skill system, where like they'll do an ISC of them working on it and they'll be like, oh by the way, it's in patch three dot two six. Or it's in four point Man. You know, it's just system. casually just kind of drop it. Because it's skill it's important, but it's also so minor. But yeah, I agree. It's I think we could do it and i think it's gonna think, be fun it's i think we could we could probably develop like a controversial topic bingo card for next year like there are so many things coming into the the game that people are okay. kind of like you, you mentioned iffy, it. iffy about you mentioned it so this i well, i was on this this podcast this very pain, pain podcast january of 2023 so this is this has almost become an annual thing with us hanging out on the, in the very the very first podcast of the year yes and last year I made the bold decision or the, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the declaration that they're going to release theaters of war. And I knew I was going to be wrong and I was wrong. But what I did say was I say this because you have to pay attention to arena commander and look at what arena commander happened. You know, arena commander has blossomed over this last year. And I will make the same declaration this year with more, more belief theaters of war is coming out in 2024. I think so, we it, all right. It, so it's, last, it's, hold on, hold, yeah, on, hold on, hold on. Last year we did not hold hold you to the fire on this. I no. am gonna need. We're gonna need uh, the the community to come together. We, we got to come up with something for 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 Paul to do. I'm thinking uh, y you have to come up with a love song about the Redeemer if this doesn't happen, and then perform it for everyone to record forever 100 percent. i am a terrible singer so you can you can embarrass me and piss me off about about doing <laughs> about uh about having to talk about the redeemer at the same time i will do that i 100 percent. i will take that i will do those things and you can clip this and all, right. all sorts of it's sorts official of that. it's on it's camp. official if theaters of war doesn't come out dj do not make me a liar i swear to god uh, <laughs> Come on, Bunton. No, I think everybody would be better off if, like, they were able. <laughs> say, not not just because we're all tired of hearing about it, but because, like, it is a legitimately good idea. It's not. Mm. 
it, I understand why people don't like it for Star Citizen. It's not like a Star Citizen idea, but it makes so much sense as its own standalone game it makes so much sense as an extra thing to be able to do as a in star citizen video game it, it's battlefield 21 2042 or 2142 yeah. that's what we've been looking for and and you get actual spaceships now yeah i mean and and there's it makes a lot of sense in terms of gameplay in terms of practice in terms there's like a lot of factors um that kind of com combine together to make it work um as a uh as a as a as a thing that we would need in game and with this is only like they even said they've been very very serious when they said like well, i think it was 320 when they said this is part one part one of three of what they're doing with arena commander oh yeah and i know one of those parts is theaters of war <laughs> <laughs> probably part okay. two because they said All they right. mentioned so. All right, but but last we got a part one of server meshing last last year, okay, and uh, I never got yeah. a part two, so you don't. Well, no, no, no. I mean, I don't, I don't mean ISC. I mean, like they said that there's a three step oh, plan. They okay. have a three step plan for for updating Arena Commander, and step one was what we got in three twenty, and then okay. there's step two, which they're working on right now, and then step three. And, so step uh, two was like. Um, multi-crew support and like the new all this yeah, multi-crew support and responding into different ships and um you know large, new, new maps and uh up, updated you know like all that sort of stuff like part one was like the ui new overhaul and a lot of some of the, the other stuff mm -hmm. um and part two seems to be one of, and i remember back in july um they said specifically that they were told to start doing um uh theaters uh, war yeah, so yeah, I remember that. Just so, off. so you think that um, part three will be a twenty four kind of thing? You think theaters of war will be a? I mean, you've already said theaters it on of camera, war in twenty four. So <laughs> much. Yeah, All right. I, so. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was a summer thing. If they like they dropped it in you know June, you know around uh, Invictus as part of that, because that that would be the perfect time to drop something like that. Like here, you, know, you got three months of summer. You can play theaters of war. Um, for so for everybody who's wondering what theaters of war is and i guess we could kind of explain arena commander in that same vein um can you can you give them the lowdown and then we'll we'll tell we'll talk about sure. why it could be such a big deal so theaters of war is battlefield in space <laughs> it's pretty much the simple the simplest answer um it's mixed with battlefront yeah, people, mixed with battlefront yeah um, and which is which always intrigues me because there are probably people who work at CIG who worked on the original Battlefront or Battlefront Two at least, like the old Battlefront. That'd be amazing. The, the current one, the good ones. The company, the companies, yeah, the good ones. Because the company that made the good ones ended up being purchased by uh, Crytek, and they became what um, Crytek? Yeah, they became Crytek Manchester or something like that. Crytek. It was a Crytek office in the UK, and that was the office that got shut down when they started running out of money. Huh. And I know some of those developers who worked on like, I think it was like rebellion or resistance. It was that like, like fight against, it was that, that game about you fighting against the North Koreans invading America. Um, uh, that was kind of like off the, like oh, that. Oh, was that home? That wasn't home that, front. No, it was home front. Yeah. It's home. Yeah. Front. Okay. It was yeah. home front. Yeah. That was, that was of several, I think at least one of those dads who worked uh, at, yeah. at CIG worked on Homefront. Yeah, because that's Which makes sense. They worked on CryEngine. Yeah. So, and they, and so some of them have been coming over. So I'm like, there is a chance. See? That some of those people who work at CIG built the original Battlefront. <laughs> so, it's, not, it's not just us. Isn't it the game industry also, they use, they use the same dips. Okay. So yeah. the weird saying, oh, no, it, the, it tracks. I, this is. I, I I mean this in the most in the most most specific way that oh, the God. game industry is incredibly incestuous. Oh, ah, don't say it. <laughs> in the, well, because it's because it, it it very much like pulls from the, there's only a small group of people who actually can make video games and have the this constitution to do so because it's very you know uh, hard work and you don't get paid a lot of money for it. So uh, there's only a handful of people, and once you reach that that stage, it's not difficult to find a job if you need to find a job and you you get to know people it's why if you look at any like if you look at cig developers uh like all of the people who work in montreal have worked for ubisoft why because it's where ubisoft is headquartered yep if you look at uh people who work in cig austin a lot of them worked at blizzard why 
because it's Blizzard's headquarters. That's why all these people so. sound so similar. It's like look, Peter Molyneux and Todd Howard yeah. and Chris Roberts. They all they all grew up, you know, trading notes. <laughs> yeah, they say so many I, similar things. Yeah, that's why it's it, and and they they watch each other. I mean, they, like you do not tell me that the three dot two. 3.21 trailer, which specifically mentions seamless environments right after Starfield release. That was that was a not, that was not that wasn't a shot across the bow. That was a that was a sticking start. Uh, Todd Howard's head in the toilet and Chris just giving him a swirly. Uh, yeah, that I was, think that they was just what was ran their ship into the other ship at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Full ramming speed, Captain. We yeah. got no loading nope. screens. <laughs> yeah, that was that was, and and they they didn't have to mention that. They just did because. Like we, everyone in Star Citizen has already known that. So, <laughs> right. Um, All right. So, Arena Commander yeah. and Theaters of War themselves are like this sort of closed environment of Star Citizen where you can just spawn mm -hmm. in, play, shoot, kill, get kills, have fun, and and end. You don't yeah. have to go and set no, up. No stuff. consequences. You don't have to set up. You don't have to like worry about your regen or your gear or anything like that. So, yeah. For a lot of people, that's taking away the worst part of Star Citizen and just leaving the actual yeah. gameplay for them. And that's why it could be such a big deal the original concept for these gameplay game styles was that you would in the game in star citizen you'd be able to go to your hangar or your ship and you'd have this little sim pod almost like a vr headset and it would simulate these games within star citizen so instead of you know you're doing your cargo trip and you're on a 20 minute quantum travel instead of being like oh let me log out into my other player and go do a mission where i might die and lose my stuff you could just go into your hangar, go into your sim pod, and play a couple deathmatch rounds with your friends, and then log log back, you know, go back to real real life in Star Citizen, and continue what you're doing. That's crazy powerful for a game where, you know, they're trying to make you take time to do things. But the other side of this, and I think this is the much cooler side, I really hope they do this, is that this could be a standalone game they release on Steam for free. That yeah. easily gets people, maybe, you know, it could be a progression. They release this on Steam for free. People play it. They say, hey, this is pretty cool. Is there a story? Cool. Squadron 42 is a thing. You try Squadron 42. Hey, this is pretty cool. Can I go to that planet? They find out Star Citizen is a thing. They could really set up like a nice progression of learning more about Star Citizen, starting with Theaters of War and Arena Commander. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't see why not do that, but I guess you're also leaving money on the table if you can lock those behind the paywall of Star Citizen. Yeah, but I also can see a lot of value in selling it as a separate entity. Because like Squadron 42 for the longest time had um, Embrina Commander as an addition, as an add-on. So Squadron 42 technically had a multiplayer mode. It just shared the same, that same mode with people in Star, uh, Star Citizen. Fair. So I could, I could still see it as its own standalone mode because you could still make a lot of money for people who have no interest in Star Citizen. But would love to play Battlefield 2142 again. Yeah. Um, uh, for those who don't know, Battlefield 2142 was a f the best Battlefield outside of, like, say, Battlefield 4. It was a futuristic Battlefield. It was only on PC. It had mechs and had this great mode where you had to, so like, cool. you had to, like, launch on top of a, like a spaceship and infiltrate the spaceship and fight in the quarters of the spaceship and then blow up the spaceship. It was it's an amazing game um, that is uh, sadly no longer running because, you know, yay. Um, uh, but, um, 2142 was, was, was great. And if, if arena commander or if that's just theaters work and even scratch a tiny bit of that itch, I'm here for it. So, yeah. And I, and I do think that that would 100% be something that would do well uh, as a standalone steam release. People would play the hell out of it. Do you think they'd do that? <laughs> or do you think they'd, they'd keep it to their own launcher? I think they keep it their own launcher. I think, but I do think that there, there's definitely a market for that. Like, you know, sell it for 30 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, um, definitely. You know, like, like a, a cheap intro. It's, it's the, it's like cheap. You go, oh, and then people are like, oh, what is this? It's like, oh, it's based off an actual MMO you can play too, where you can do all of this stuff, but in an MMO sphere. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, and if you want to do a single player, there's an entire single player campaign where you play in a, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, you see, like, like it just starts growing in terms of people's interest if you just kind of get that little foot in the door first. So. I never even really thought about this, but for people like myself, and I'm sure there are plenty of these people in our community who are coming from other games and, and have just a long passion for a different sci-fi game. I, per, for me, it's Halo. This could replace mm -hmm. Halo. 
Like if if the gameplay Easy. in this FPS mode gets good enough, I would start to spend more time playing that with my friends in there. And then the campaign on top of that, if they can make that as interesting, like that's um they start to encroach in other markets I didn't think as much about. Yeah. And uh the other thing, I'm I'm gonna only mention this briefly because this this is if this is its own topic um on a video um which is um uh squadron 42 going to consoles so you could do a uh, a theaters of war on consoles it wouldn't be that difficult because it would be remove it the, the 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 problems that a lot of mmos have with consoles because they have to go through a lot of qa processes and so updates are much slower on consoles can take twice as long on a console than it can on a, on a regular game but Spin off Theaters of War, its own standalone game, or Arena Commander is its own standalone game with Theaters of War attached to it. On a on you know thirty bucks on on uh, com- comes with Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, I mean, I could see it. Yeah, I could see I could see that doing very well. Um, and you know, obviously, it's Pass. leaving money. It, <laughs> it leaves crazy. it leaves money. It leaves money on the table for uh, uh, if you're leaving money on the table, if CIG doesn't go towards the 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 console market after the PC market for these sorts of things. Yeah, so. yeah, they'll definitely come second. A couple more questions here, just to finish us off for next year. Yeah, um, there are a few systems we've talked about these a little bit that are coming in. I want to tackle them both here in the same talk. Specifically, engineering and freight management, I think, are two systems that are going that have been more focused on by CIG. Uh, still aren't very well known by, uh, I think, a lot more casual players who aren't looking ahead, but are two systems that are really going to change how the game plays, or at least how players think about the game next year. Mm-hmm. What do you think of these two systems? Um, I, well, I mean, like, what do you mean? Like, do I think they're going to come in? Do I yeah, think, like, what, are, do I think are you excited for them? Do they interest you? Do you think they're yeah. going to be bad, good, too much? I th- I think they're going to be good. I think they're going to be interesting. I think they're going to have problems and they're going to fi- have to fix them. But both of those systems are very important because as I've already started to discover, and I don't know if you've experienced this as well, uh, cargo is a weird system because you have to kind of know how to arrange the cargo in the right ways for it to function better. You know, it's 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 like Tetris, but it's like three D Tetris. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, like I, I'm trying to put uh, boxes in my cutlass that aren't supposed to fit the cutlass, or they do fit the cutlass, but it's like the you know eight SCU crate can go here, the two SCU crate goes there, the four SCU crate goes there, and like you're seeing how it all lays out. That alone, yep. right now, is a problem in the sense of like now now it's kind of requires some skill, but having to load and unload cargo for uh, for cargo decks or for cargo elevators, uh, that's going to like loading things onto your cargo elevator. So you have it arranged for things you can pull out easily for what you need to do. And then that ties into things like engineering and like preparing a ship to combat or the combat for takeoff and for travel and being able to react suddenly for, to things and be able to, to reroute power to different locations and all those sorts of skills. I think it's going to add a lot of depth and gameplay and a lot of interest in the game by people who would may have not have been interested in before. But I also think it's going to add in a lot of problems <laughs> because the average person who's a PvP pilot doesn't want to worry about that. They just want to go pew, 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 pew. You know, they want to be able to, to, to be on the bleeding edge of blackout and get their guns on target and squeeze the trigger and get that kill. Yep. They don't care about fixing their fighters. <laughs> they don't care about moving cargo. Uh, so this system is going to have to be balanced, and so it doesn't completely hurt those people or like brand new, new, new pilots who just have like an Aurora. They don't. You don't want. You don't want to have to have them. They don't. They don't, don't want to have to give them like a PhD in engineering to make sure they understand how to function make their ship go they just want their think, ship to go so do you think that if a player is just getting repaired every time they go back to a station they'll be fine and not need to worry about engineering oh, or like yeah. your single yeah i fighter. think i i think i think generally speaking as long as you're you just click repair the ship it'll fix everything um we might see lo- like timers where like you say like you sit, sit, fix the ship and you say cool it'll be fixed in 10 minutes or five minutes but you know, compared to like allowing for players to just kind of go, you know, boom, 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 fix, repair, done. Um, but 
there's going to have to be some balance there. I, I don't know if that's going to be the initial thing. So. I hope they flesh out the startup process of ships. Like when you get into larger ships, oh. they make it so that the tuner has to like start it up specifically to make sure it runs yeah. good. That I, hmm. uh, you, you and me are uh, like of the same mind on that. Like it's one of those things where I've, I'm not a person who's like, you don't, I don't want DCS <laughs> levels right. of, no. of startup <laughs> sequence. But I do know, want to know someone who can like, you have the auto startup, which takes like a minute, but if you know what you're doing, you can go, uh, you know, prime the uh prime prime you know like like inject the 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 fuel or turn on the batteries to start warming up the generator turn on the generator um you know generator gets up to t to 20 percent. i know i can start up the engines the engines will then start pulling from the from the generator uh, you know like four or five steps for you to get up there and if you do it well enough you can get it to like 30 seconds so you can start up your ship in 30 seconds where the auto startup is like a minute or 45 seconds something that allows for players who just want to hit the auto startup they, they can hear the little do, 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 all the little cool sound effects and stuff going on and if the players who are like more hardcore can be able to do like a combat start effectively like where they can get things yeah. going without having to worry about it much so yeah i think that seems to be what they're pointing towards with the whole tuner but they mm -hmm. the tuner seems to be the role of engineering that they've spent the most time talking about. So maybe they're waiting until capital ships are more of a thing to to delve into that. Yeah. Um, the freight system, on the other hand, is I think a lot less avoidable than engineering because it's mm -hmm. basically changing all of our inventory systems around and yeah. making the freight kiosk and stuff. You think? I mean, we already saw how people felt when the space stations got disconnected from landing zones. Do you think this is going to be a problem? Like a, a yeah. real problem? No, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. I think there's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of screeching though. <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of people who are very upset about it. Gnashing of teeth. Um, yeah, uh, I've already seen people who mentioned like, oh, so they're making the game worse. When I when I mentioned <laughs> it, I've heard people on chance like, oh, so they're actively intentionally spiking their own game. Yes, it's always um, been meant to be this bad since the beginning. Sorry. Yeah, it, it, and I always like to sort of point out it's it's a little bit of both because. What CIG wants you to do is they want you to live in your hangar. Like that's that's your your spot where you're going to hang out a lot. So that'll be where you go, or in you know the future your your landing zone, or you like your your base, you know. Um, so they want you to have a nice centralized location where you can organize everything and have everything ready to go. But they don't want you to be able to just like fly within you know half a meter of the zone for this for the for the the space station just be like yoink and pull yeah. it over to your your ship because they want you to take time and they want it to kind of matter how well you do those sorts of things so um like that that's that's where i like whenever i hear people complain about or are they going to become too too casual? I'm like, do you see what they're doing with cargo <laughs> and like like inventory management? Like it's it's a thing now. Um you know, and that's why on the opposite side, you hear a lot of people being like, they're going to make this game too sim. It's going to be boring and it's going to be it's going to be work, you know, rather than that sort of thing. Well, so, yeah, we we talked about this earlier about whether it's getting too casual. Should it get more casual? Is it getting too complex? And this is definitely one of those things that factors in. I mean, this is a mm -hmm. very, very crucial part of the game. It's also super. um it's it it seems really prone to failure because there's so much mm -hmm. that has to do with freight. This is linked into a probably the biggest profession in the game too. And then it's also like everybody own everybody's own personal inventories. This starts to get into that 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 area of like, okay, so let's say uh, that you are getting stuff out of somebody's ship and they have 14 picos. Do you have to go up to the box in their ship and tractor beam 14 picos out mm -hmm. of that? Or is there an inventory mm. screen? Like, there's a lot of how, how really how far are they going to go with physicality with this? Yeah, that's a good question. I think I think um, the way we have box inventory, where you walk up to a box and you you click that box, I don't think that's changing. I think that's the final version of inventory that we're going to see the paper doll and the different screens. I think that's generally speaking what we're going to have going forward with little change. Um, because at one point they did have the idea of physicalizing everything in a box. So you open up a box and you have to pull out absolutely everything yeah. in that box. And like, that's a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's that's a, nuts. 
Uh, and so like uh, the, the idea that they're, you know, I think at the most we'll see is instead of being able to click anywhere in a box, you'd have to go to like a little inventory screen and click the screen and then it'll well, bring that's, everything Yeah, up. so the boxes but, they've shown us had little screens on the side and I'm wondering if they're going to standardize that and be like, okay, so mm -hmm. here's your box manifest and you can sort of yeah. select. But I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I was also thinking that loot menu they showed us they were going to use for inventory overall, but it doesn't sound like they're going to. All right, so last question I have for you. Mm -hmm. Do you think Star Citizen, and take all the time you need to explain what you think of this term, do you think Star Citizen is going to be going mainstream next year? And that includes Squadron 42. Yes and no. I think Squadron will go a bit more mainstream. Um, in the sense that we're going to get people who normally wouldn't be um, would normally wouldn't be interested in Star Citizen. Um, the best way I kind of describe this recently, which is the people who play single player games and the people who play MMOs, are not the same type of people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I and you are those people who play both. Um, but like this, this is, is your my first, first MMO, MMO, right? Yeah. So like, yeah. I am um, I'm out of my element. And I've played MMOs in the past, but I'm much more of a survival game kind of player. But like, you know, you and I both played Halo and enjoyed Halo, like single player and storyline and that kind of stuff. And so as a result, you're going to see a lot of people who become Squadron 42 fans and either don't know or don't care about Star Citizen. Hmm. That's, I think yeah, that's that's. that's Good point. That's going to be the mainstream. We're going to be people who are like, oh, yeah, I like Squadron 42. I don't play MMOs. That's like, going to be really that, interesting to see Squadron 42 be the more known name. Yeah. Um, and because, I mean, it's got so many big actors. It's, 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 yeah. it's definitely leveraging itself to being that better known title. Um, but uh, at the same time, I don't, and I do think that there will be more people who will play Star Citizen because of it, and we'll see more bigger names in content yeah. creator community come in and play it, and um, especially with, you know, GTA 6 still two years away, well, I guess now one year away, but, and also only on console for, you know, at that release, so there's, like, so many problems that it, that, like, GTA is, is bringing up that I, I, I think we're going to see Star Citizen fill a lot of those gaps for uh, those sorts of games, the kind of open world games, the larger AAA games, and even MMOs and space games. Like Starfield was this big attempt at a space game. It's done really well financially, but like critically, it's kind of a eh, yeah, response. It's been rough. Like you, you and I both were like, we hoped this would bring more people into space games. And it, it may have done the opposite. It may have been told people that space games are just boring. I think it's I think it's done a good job for space games, but not maybe for itself so much. Like how many do people have you seen come into Star Citizen because of Starfield? I don't know. I don't. I, I, I mean, I've, most of the people I've I've seen came for in Star Citizen, went to Starfield, and came back to Star Citizen, being like, "Yeah, I, now I know, understand why Star Citizen's good." I've seen. I've um, had a lot of people join because of Starfield. I, I and I have seen a lot of videos being like Starfield is garbage, Star Citizen is better. Here's why, and I, I do think that that has definitely drawn more attention to games like Star Citizen because of and, and even like Elite Dangerous and No Man's Sky because of what they do better than Starfield in some cases. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I um I think you make a good point about Squadron. Honestly, it's weird to have gone this long with Star Citizen being the thing we talk about all the time and everyone being like, don't talk about Squadron, uh, and then. We're going to see it probably take the lion's share of attention. Maybe not next year. I, I, I think you're, you have a good point that like next year would be a more mainstream year if that happened. I also think Arena Commander could be a big tool for that. If they do get oh, yeah. Arena Commander up to a point where it plays well and more content creators, as you said, have started to come in and make clips and videos, people will realize, hey, you can play Star Citizen without spending two hours just to do a single <laughs> firefight. And when, that could be when you can. When you can convince old school Battlefield uh, plans fans like, um, um, why am I blanking on his name? He already already covers Star Citizen. Jack Frags. Um, it, well, Jack Frags, yeah, but uh, not just Jack Frags. Uh, you have you've had him on your podcast. Um, Ollie? Not Ollie. Ollie was Level GTA. Cap. Level Cap. Thank you. Yeah. 
when you get to sort of like level cap and level cap has friends all over the, the, the battlefield scene. Yeah. If they start getting into star citizen because level cap or Jack frags or other people start talking about it and start bringing those people in. Um, yeah, that's that it could, you could definitely see that sort of happening. So, yep. Um, yep. Yeah, I don't think it'll be a mainstream year for Star Citizen, but it does feel like the first year that this game's going to have an actual good reputation amongst a larger group of people. Like, I think I think it'll have an time. average. I think I think this is the first year. The, towards the end of twenty twenty three was the first year I saw people make obvious clickbait videos, and the comments all be like, "Bro, you're wrong. It's not a scam. <laughs> so fine. Yeah. Like, yeah. like that was the top comments on these videos. I'm like, wait, what? Like, yeah. Like, I remember after the after Citizen Con, uh, it was like yeah. a couple days later seeing the the different reactions to it, and I put out a tweet. I was like, I wonder what the press cycle is going to be like about this, and I, I honestly didn't think it was going to be great. But then we went and we saw what people were saying, and it was like, wait a minute, we might actually be starting to round a corner here. Yeah, because um, I think most of it was was uh, was mostly just kind of. And some of it was just like straight up great, but like the worst of it was just, mm, it's cool that they got this engine done. Maybe they're actually starting to work on the game. Yeah. Like it was like kind of like an offhanded comment sort of thing. So, yeah. so do I, to, to answer your question, do I think Star Citizen is going to go mainstream? No. Do it have a chance to? Yes. But if Squad Void 2, I think will become more, more mainstream than Star Citizen will when it releases, but I don't think it's going to release next year. So, 2024 i should say this year so yeah maybe that'll be the most interesting development this year is watching the public acknowledgement of squadron 42 exceed star citizen that would be very interesting yeah all right man well thank you so much for joining me for this episode first of the year with i'm sure many more you'll be on um <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be an as many as i can I'm, I'm really yeah. looking forward oh, yeah. to whatever we, we, we see from here. Let the folks know, though, where they can find the content on your channels before you go. Twitch.tv slash The Astro Pub, YouTube.com slash The Astro Pub Live, and YouTube.com slash The Astro Historian. Yeah. All right, man. And uh, thank you, everybody, for coming and listening. As you know, I mean, you might be new, a 2024 new listener, but we do these audio on all platforms ad free and we're also on youtube so come join us every week we're doing a new show and of course the citizen central monthly podcast is talking to all these big names across across the star citizen community about big topics so thanks again astro Pub, one last time for coming on and thank Thanks you for all on. for joining us see you all next week mm -hmm.